That's all right, Timmy. I'll finish the ice cream, and you can put the sign out now, if you like. Okay. Thanks, Lassie. Upstairs. Company? Mm -hmm. Hi, Timmy. Hi, Boomer. Aren't you going to play ball? You know I can't. Robin's coming. Oh, I forgot. That English kid. What's she doing? Fixing a bed for Robin's dog. What kind of a dog? Dad said they had a whole kennel of Great Danes. Great Danes? They're big. They sure are. Lassie, put it back where it belongs. Please. Think Robin will try out for the team? Dad said English people play cricket instead of baseball. Cricket? What kind of game's that? I don't know. Think they hide in bushes and chirp at each other? That's what crickets do. Dad stayed with his folks when he was stationed in England. So he's coming here for a visit. How would you like to lick the beater? I'll say. OK. Oh, here they are. You can finish it, Boomer. Come on. I'll get his other things and take them on out. Come on, Robin. Meet the rest of the family. Oh, hello, Robin. Howdy, Mrs. Martin. Well, we're awfully glad you're going to be with us. That's mighty white of you, ma'am. Timmy, meet Robin. Hi, Robin. What's cooking, old chap? We're going to be the best of pals, and I'm not just whistling Dixie. Um, oh, uh, Boomer, why, why don't you introduce Boomer? Come on. Boomer, I mean Ralph. This is Robin. Hi. Put her there, Boomer. Lassie wants to be friends, too. My word, she's a beauty. Hasn't anyone let that poor dog out of its crate yet? Excuse me, girl. in a minute. Relax, old boy. Relax. Some great day. He's making you welcome. I bet Robin would like to see his room, Timmy. Come on, Robin. Hands across the sea. up to me. Dinner in five minutes. I'll leave 
leave the basin nice and clean. Well, not much like London, is it, Robin? It is rather different, sir. I hope you know how very much we want you to have a good time here. Come to think of it, your mother said those very words to me. Really, sir? I mean, no kidding? I was, uh, I was so American and trying to be so British, and they were so British and trying to be so American. It must have been deucedly uncomfortable. It was, until we just got around to being ourselves. Uh, would you mind saying grace tonight, Robin? I think it would be nice if you did. We thank thee, Father, for this day. Help us tomorrow to do thy will. Breathe thy blessings on every heart in this household, and for what we are about to receive, our deepest thanks. Thank you, Robin. I can't make up my mind which is most delicious. Or if it's a combined taste that make dinner so wonderful. Just wait till she whips up her Virginia baked ham with candied yams. Oh, if they're half as good as this. Are you ready for seconds, Uncle Petrie? Ah, uh, I'm afraid I'll have to leave seconds to the younger generation. <laughs> Would you mind not smoking just yet, Uncle Petrie? This one's for Mrs. Martin. Mom wanted you to have this. Oh, thank you very much. This one's for Mr. Martin. Thank you, Robin. Here's Uncle Petrie's. Well, now, thank you, boy. And Timmy. Thanks. Well, what do you know? Uh, reckon there's nothing to stop me from smoking now. Say, these are just great. Best pipe I ever owned. My goodness, what beautiful embroidery. And I'll bet Granny did them. Indeed she did. Oh, why, it's lovely. We must all write thank you notes right away. Look what I got. I'm looking. Those are my school colors, Timmy. We're very proud of our colors at home. I'm proud of them too, Robin. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Hiya, Boomer. Waiting for Timmy? Uh, he's walking up ahead. Hey, what is that? A girl? Well, not exactly. Come on, let's dive bomb him. Sure. <laughs> it's Boomer. We always go to school together. You and Lassie actually speak to each other, don't you? Which came first, cricket or baseball? How oh, we were playing cricket before America was a colony. Do you think I could learn it? I'd be happy to teach you. your brooders. And Lassie wouldn't permit Basil to frighten them. Oh? I thought you'd be with the other boys, having fun. We're having enough fun alone. Tomorrow I'm going to teach Timmy how to play cricket. Oh, well, would you like some fresh milk and chocolate cookies? I was rather wishing for tea. I'm not old enough for tea. <laughs> Neither am I, but at home this is tea time. Well, here we call it snack time. I like that expression, snack time. <laughs> I like tea time better. It makes me feel grown up. Oh, come on. We'll wash up first, Molly. Well, 
Shall I pour some milk for Boomer? No, I don't think so. What do you call that old thing hanging around your neck? It's a scarf. Like my cap, it's woven in my school colors. Wearing them is evidence of one's loyalty to a school. Yes? I think we ought to have school colors, too. Yeah, black and blue. <laughs> Will you please be quiet? Are there any more questions? The chap in the third row. Why do you wear those skinny little short pants? <laughs> Perhaps to remind us that we are still children. Perhaps because exposure to the elements hardens one. Or perhaps we respect our fathers, who also wore skinny little short pants. The young lady in the second row. My name is Wilhelmina. Don't forget to give your address. I won't, if you'll come and see me. So there. I wanted to know if you flew to America, or did you sail? I bet you swam. That's more than any of you fellas could do. Before recess starts, I think we ought to thank Robin for his most interesting talk. Ooh. Thank you, Robin. Ralph, will you and Bud come to the desk? The rest of the class may be excused. Timmy, I'll give you a piece of my candy if you'll introduce me. Liquish? Okay. I don't know what brought on this outburst of rudeness. Has Robin done something I should know about? Well, the three of us will talk it all out after school today. And tomorrow, too, if your manners do not improve immediately. All right. God bless Mom, Dad, and Uncle Petrie, and Lassie, and God bless everybody. Amen. Excuse me for forgetting. And God bless Robin, too. And get Boomer and Bud to like him. Because Robin's my friend, too. You sleep? No, Dad. How'd you get on with Robin today? Well, um, we get along fine. Man to man, do you think he'd rather go out with Uncle Petrie and me tomorrow or go to school with you? I know I'd like to be with you. And Robin? I'm kind of mixed up. Well, that happens to most of us one time or another. Even grown-ups? Especially grown-ups. Sometimes talking helps. Well, Boomer and Robin are both swell kids. Of course they are. But they're different in a way. They talk different. They dress different. Yes. But does that matter so much? The kids were uh, making fun of Robin today, is that it? You're not mixed up, Timmy. Well, someone is. Once Boomer and the others understand Robin, they'll learn something you found out by yourself. I hope so. What did I find out, Dad? Oh, that it's not wrong or bad to be different. If you meet somebody halfway, you get to know each other, you can learn a lot from each other. Oh. Good night, son. Good night, Dad. Mixed up a little. Push down the pedal and lock it right there. There you are. Bet you'll be running this thing for noon. Oh, that would be smashing. You smash it and I'll tan your hide. He means that would be swell. Oh? Then why didn't he say so? He did. In English. 
See you after school. Right out. Don't forget the cricket stuff. Hi, Sean. Here, Basil. Like to try it again? Hop up. Release that gear first. Stay after school. It's not my fault. Our Robin's. If you take his side, you're his friend, not mine. Can't a fella have two friends? You playing ball this afternoon? Maybe after my cricket lesson. Come on, Lassie. Now you tell me what the bowler does. He tries to knock the sticks off the wicket. And the batsman must protect the wicket by hitting your bowl. If he succeeds, he has to reach the other wicket safely. Just like baseball. Except that I must get there before the fielder can knock the sticks off the wicket. Pretty complicated. No, it isn't. Just have a go at it. You'll see. Well played, old chap. Throw it in, bud. Give me the ball. Try and get it. You're behaving shamefully. Kindly give me that ball. Sure. Ought to put your energies to better use, chum. Don't chum me. Come on, Robin. Let's go back to the house. We came here to play cricket. I won't let these bullies spoil our fun. Oh, you think you can stop us? It's about time somebody tried. Well, go ahead. Try. If you want it that way. Yeah, I want it that way. Hey, that wasn't fair. Jimmy. Well, would you mind feeding them for me? Sure, Ruth. Now get out of here. Go on back there. Come on. Get. Get. Go on. Basil? Come here, Basil. Come on. There you are now. Come on. You're a fine little doggy. <laughs> Don't you let anybody tell you you're not. What's he good for anyway? Always getting underfoot and scaring the brooders. Don't pay any attention to Uncle Petrie. His bark is worse than his bite. Just how you feel, Robin.
wouldn't you like to talk about it? I've made Timmy lose all his friends. Well, now, that's quite a trick. How did you manage it? By being myself, I guess. They don't like me, and they don't like Timmy because he does. Well, never having been a boy, I'm afraid this whole thing confuses me a little bit. Even Basil can't get off on the proper foot. We've caused so much trouble, I think we'd do best to fly on to Toronto. Oh, well, now, none of us here would like that at all. I won't get any pleasure out of it, either. Well, if you did leave, don't you think that would be a little bit like running away? They know I'm not a coward. Boomer? I think it was Bud. Must have been a real Donnybrook. Oh, it was all right. A real Donnybrook. Well, I think you'll feel better after you've had a bath. I don't know. In any case, I think you owe it to Timmy to talk the whole thing out before you do anything drastic. First of all, though, you have a bath and a rest. Your peaches, Mrs. Martin. gone to the airport. Gee, just when the fellas got to like him, they even wanted to learn how to play cricket. And he thought he was being a nuisance. We ought to go after him. Now, come on. Well, if he cut across the fields, he'd pass pretty close to here. Oh, dear, if anything has happened to him. Come on, Timmy. We'll take Lassie and scout around. There's a wagon path further over. Pick us up there. We've got to find Basil, Lassie. He ran away with Robin. Come on, Timmy. of you, Timmy. It was because of what I was doing to you, making you lose all your pals. I've got something to tell you. And I think you'll like it. Come on home, Robin. Well bold, Timmy. You're not just a whistling Dixie chum. Now, why can't they do this between innings and baseball? I don't know, but I sure wish they would.
Something smells super, as Timmy would say. Timmy and Lassie have just taken off for the woods. I saw them. He seemed in his usual big hurry. Well, he and Boomer are starting a junior club project today. They're going to adopt a tree. Oh? Just what do they do when they adopt a tree? Oh, learn all you can about it. Care for it. We got the tape measure. Oh. Here you are, son. What are you going to measure with it? Well, for the adopt a tree, you have to measure it and see how tall it is. And how do you do that? Climb the tree? No, you measure its shadow. Oh, I see. And then you the shadow of a man. Which man? Oh, any man. Come on, Timmy. Here, wait a minute, honey. Mail this for me, will you? Okay. Thank you. Take it, girl. Lots will make sure I mail it. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> I don't care about this one either. I wouldn't want to adopt it. What kind of a tree do we want to adopt? We'll know when we see it. There she goes chasing squirrels when we're looking for a tree. what Lassie was barking for. She likes this tree. I do, too. I think it's the best one. Timmy! Over here, Uncle Petrie! How about we adopt this tree? Shake? Good deal. Shake. What was Lassie barking about? Because we found this tree. We're going to adopt it. Well, what do you know? The lone apple tree in these woods. Well, how did you boys happen to choose this tree? It was Lassie. She led us to it. <laughs> You're a real smart girl, Lassie. You know something? They say this tree was planted more than 100 years ago. A 100 years? Yep. God! It's supposed to have been planted by Johnny Appleseed himself. Johnny Appleseed? That was just his nickname. Right name was John Chapman. Who was he, Uncle Petrie? Well, sir, Johnny Appleseed was a real fine man. Roamed all over this part of the country way back in the old pioneer days. And he sure loved apple trees. He used to plant apple seeds wherever he went. Wanted everyone to enjoy them. I'm sure glad Lassie found this tree. Me too. Something special for me about old apple trees. Picked this one out myself a long, long time ago. Those initials are L and P. Did you carve them, Uncle Petrie? Well... And the two hearts with the arrow? Yeah. I'll bet you even know Johnny Appleseed. Oh, Johnny Appleseed was a little before my time, Boomer. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do for you boys. I'm going home and get some lumber and some tools. I'm going to build you a bench all around that tree. Sort of a round table, you know, for your secret powwows. Gee, Gee thanks a lot. <laughs> There. Guess that does it. Gee, thanks. It's super. Me too. I mean, thank you. <laughs> Glad you boys like it. Well, got to pick up your dad now, Timmy. We're driving into town. But we'll be back and put some braces under that bench. Make it stronger. In the meantime, is it all right if Boomer and I climb the tree? 
Do we inspect the branches? You gotta do that when you adopt a tree. Well, if you're careful and don't climb too high. We won't. We won't. All right. Lassie, you and Mike stand down here to stand guard. from there, son. We got permission to come up here from Uncle Petrie. I take my orders from Uncle Sam, Sonny. You'll have to come down. You want me to go up and get him? Yeah, just a minute. If you don't come down from there, we'll have to climb up and get you. Hey, that's quite a watchdog you got here. It belongs to my boy. What's going on here? They've been trying to get those boys down from that tree. The government's building a highway through here. I got orders to clear this entire area of trees. Including that old apple tree? That's right. There's something special about that tree? Legend has it it was planted by Johnny Appleseed over a hundred years ago. Now, how about that? You've heard of Johnny Appleseed? From the time I was this high. <laughs> what do you know? Be a crime against nature to destroy it. Yeah. The boys have sort of adopted it. Adopted it? Well, their club is sponsoring an adopt-a-tree program. Oh. Well, why can't they adopt another tree away from this area? Well, the boys have a special affection for this tree. More now that they've heard that it was planted by Johnny Appleseed. Sure would break their hearts if it was chopped down. Yeah, I got two kids of my own. But even for my own kids free, I still have to follow orders. Don't like it much myself, how far it's disappearing. Well, it's the price we pay for progress. Yeah. Tell you what I can do. I can have my men start at the other end of the forest. That should give you a couple of days to let the boys get used to the idea. I think that'd help some. Thanks a lot. Not at all. Come on, Johnny. Well, let's get the braces out of the truck and put them on for the boys. Yeah, might as well let them enjoy the rest of the day. Our club leader told us there are over 7,000 different kind of apple trees in the world. My goodness, I had no idea there were that many. I bet Uncle Petrie knows. He knows a lot about apple trees. Don't you, Uncle Petrie? Well... <clears throat> Come on, girl. Let's go look in the book for more Johnny Appleseed's trees. You have to be excused? Yes, dear. <laughs> Come on, girl. This is gonna be a whole lot rougher than I thought. Paul, I think you should tell him now. No. Well, the longer you put it off, the worse it's going to be for both of you. Hi, Dad. Hi, son. You, uh, mind if I come in for a little talk, son? like that. What should we talk about, Dad? Well, Timmy, uh, did you ever hear the expression, into each life some rain must fall? I heard Uncle Petrie say it once when he broke his guitar string. <laughs> well, that means that none of us can expect to go through life without some sorrow or disappointment. I know. There are times when all of us have to make certain sacrifices in the name of progress. Progress? 
What's progress? Progress, son, is, well, the many changes and improvements that have made our country great. Why, this very land, the land that we're living on right now, was once a forest thick with trees. Right here? In my bedroom? That's right. And these trees had to be cut down in the name of progress to make way for progress. Houses, roads. They're gonna cut down Johnny Appleseed's tree for progress. It's happened before, son. Two other little boys. I remember a, a famous poem about a tree. Maybe you heard it at school. It goes something like this. Woodman, spare that tree. Touch not a single bough. In youth it sheltered me. And I'll protect it now. I learned it in one of our club meetings. Why don't you boys stay out too long now? We won't. Thanks again, Mom. Thanks very much, Mrs. Martin. <laughs> All right. Goodbye. Have a good time. We will. Bye. Bye. I'm sure I could go some chow right now. Me too. Now look, boys. You can't go picnicking around here. It's too dangerous with all these falling trees. We bought this food for you. I am too. You brought all this food for us? You must get awful hungry and thirsty, working out in the hot sun all day, chopping down trees. This is cookies and sandwiches. My mom made them. Hot coffee. Timmy's mom made this, too. Well, uh, why should your mom go to all that trouble for us, Timmy? Because we, Boomer and I, asked her to. You, uh... You wouldn't be trying to bribe us now, would you, Timmy? I don't know what that means. <laughs> Well, what's this? That's fruit. Uncle Petey sent it. And these are napkins. Dad sent them so it wouldn't get messy. Well, you thank your folks for us, Timmy. That's real thoughtful of them. The way I feel right now, I'm liable to choke on it. I know what you mean. You talk to the kids. I'll go check the chainsaw crew. A question? Sure, kid. Are you gonna really cut down Johnny Appleseed's tree? Afraid so. Do you have to chop down the tree? Wish I didn't. Could anyone help you not to chop it down? I don't know, kid. Maybe the President of the United States. won't let him cut down Johnny Appleseed's tree. Willie Lassie. Good girl. Hi, Timmy. Hi, Boomer. Come on in. I get the letter all finished. I copied the president's address out of this travel book. Pretty good, Timmy. But it's just no use. What do you mean? My pop says the president's very busy right now. And it'll take weeks before he gets a chance to read it. And by that time, the old apple tree will be gone. I know Boomer's father's a grown-up. And grown-ups know just about everything. Even if the president's real busy, I think he'd find enough time to read a little boy's letter. And when he sees it's about Johnny Appleseed's tree, he'll write and answer it.
Hello, Mr. Hanby. Good morning, Mrs. Martin. Package for you. Oh. You sign for it, please? Mm-hmm. Hello, Lassie. Did we forget something? Well, someone's writing to the President of the United States. That's Timmy's letter. But there's no stamp on it. Oh, don't worry. I'll, I'll take care of it. to get those kids away from that apple tree. It'll be raining buckets in a few minutes. Let's give those kids a lift home. Right. Come on, boys, get your dogs and hop in. It doesn't look like a tree's going to be chopped down. Today, anyway. Let's go. Uh -huh. Boomer, you get in the middle. Come on. That's a boy. Timmy, I'll put you on my lap. Okay. Go in the back, Classy. Come on. days straight now, Timmy. Huh. Looks like someone up there got mighty angry about your apple tree. I know. You mustn't get your hopes up too high, son. Once the rain stops... Nothing's gonna happen to our apple tree, Dad. I just know it. Stop raining. Now we can get some work done. I can get my wash out. Beautiful sunny day. Yeah, for chopping down trees. Mom, Dad, can we go and watch the lumberjacks? I doubt if they're working today, son. It's Saturday, you know. Can't Lass and I just go look? If they're not there, we'll come home. And if they're working, I'll send Lassie to let you know. All right, go ahead. If Lassie comes back, I'll know that you're watching the tree. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Hi, Timmy. Hi, Boomer. I hope the tree's still there. Sure. Got to make up for time we lost on account of the rain. Mister, when are you going to cut down this apple tree? Oh, not too long now. Can we wait here by the tree? All right, but you be careful. There'll be lots of falling timber. Lassie, you go home. So Mom will know that the men are working. And I'll stay here. Go on. I feel awful. Me too. But nothing's gonna happen. You'll see. Good morning, Mrs. Martin. Oh, good morning, Mr. Hanby. You have any mail for us? Made a special trip over for this one. Got a mighty important communication for Timmy. 
hope it says what Timmy wants it to say. And I hope it's not too late. <laughs> well, Lassie, I'm glad you're here. Look, it's Timmy's letter. Now, you take it to Timmy as fast as you can. I guess you'll be wanting this. You can put it around some other tree. Plenty of them around. Now, you boys back off yonder so you won't be in line with the tree when it crashes. Don't forget now. Stay back. And use the chainsaw or the winch? I would use the winch. Pull it out by the roots. It's an old tree. The roots are spread deep. Maybe we ought to use the chainsaw and dynamite what's left. Now let's try the winch. Right. I thought you said nothing was going to happen. What is it, Lassie? All right, let it rip. Gosh, a letter from the White House. Wait a minute, Mr. Engineer. I told you boys not to interfere. Would you read this letter, please? Now clear out of here. We got a job to do. It's from the White House. Hey. Says, uh, my dear Timmy. As a lover of all nature, in particular trees planted by Johnny Appleseed, I am in deep sympathy with your request. I am therefore referring this matter to the Department of the Interior and feel reasonably certain you will be most happy with the results. Sincerely. This letter has been signed by the President of the United States. No kidding. Forestry service. Well, all plans have been changed. The apple tree must be boxed before we move it. That's so the roots won't be destroyed when it's transplanted in the Martin Orchard. <laughs> can't stand here all day. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Goodbye. I sure had a lot of calls today. Who was it this time? Miss Hazel. She wanted to know if I could bring the letter Monday so the whole class could see her. Seems as if everybody in Calverton's heard about Timmy's letter. Well, it isn't everybody who gets a letter from the President of the United States. Well, I should say not. Lassie knew you were dancing me, and she saved Johnny Appleseed's tree. Didn't you, girl? You're the smartest dog in the whole wide world. You want to go fishing, don't you? Maybe Mom has something to fix it with. away before mom catches the mess on the floor. Fishing 
tickle. <laughs> Lassie, that tickles. I'm glad you're my dog, and you always will be, won't you, girl? <laughs> back from town. Let's see what he brought us. Hi, Boomer. Where'd you come from? Your dad picked us up. We were on the way over here. Oh, what'd you bring us, Dad? Was I supposed to bring you something? Seems to me I do have something for you, too, but I'm not sure I can remember where I put it or what it was. I wonder if this is it. Oh, the only things in here are a couple of fish hooks and a new bobber. I don't suppose you'd have any use for them, would you? Gee, thanks, Dad. It's just the one we wanted, isn't it, Lassie? Yeah, I figured it would be. The most expensive one in the store. Oh, hi, dear. Hi. I saw Mr. Flippin in town. He said the new tenants had moved into the old Stoddard place. Oh, so I heard. I understand she's a widow with a young son. I saw the boy in the yard when I drove by. Well, I'll have to go over there tomorrow and welcome her. Timmy, why don't you and Boomer go over and get acquainted with a young boy? Okay, Mom. Let's go, Boomer. Come on, Lassie. don't like me. You the new boy that lives at the Stoddard place? My name's Henry Bridell. I'm Timmy Martin, and this is my friend, <coughs> Boomer Bates. Make her leave me alone. She just wants to be friends. Sure, take the stick and throw it. I don't want to take the stick. Make her leave me alone. <coughs> Mike, Mike, come back here. Let the scaredy cat go. He said dogs don't like him. He really is awful scared of him. He's all mixed up. Who cares? Come on, let's go. I'll race you to the blueberry patch. No, I think we ought to show Henry he doesn't have to be afraid of dogs. Well, I don't know why we have to be bothered with him. Okay. Henry, you shaking, poor thing. It was a great big dog, and he started barking at me, and I was, and I was scared. <laughs> please, take that dog away from here, please. Lassie didn't mean to scare him. She just wanted him to play with her. Well, I, I'm sure she did, but Henry isn't used to being around dogs. Lassie just wanted to be friends. Lassie likes everybody, don't you, girl? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, too. Come on, Lassie. God bless Mom, Dad, and Uncle Petrie. And God bless everybody. Amen. Hey, 
There we are. Did you say goodnight to Dad and Uncle Petrie? You look like a little man with a big problem. But that new boy, Henry, he doesn't like Lassie. Doesn't like Lassie? And his mother doesn't like Lassie either. She said so. But why? Why not? I'm sure Lassie didn't do anything wrong. They don't like any dogs. Oh, then it isn't just Lassie. Mom, why don't they like dogs? Oh, I don't know, dear. Some people are afraid of dogs for one reason or another. But why would anybody be afraid of Lassie? Well, now, we mustn't judge people. I'm sure the Bridells have a very good reason for not liking dogs. Well, we must just try to show them that dogs like Lassie make very fine friends. Don't you worry about it. You get to sleep now. Night, Mom. been thinking. We've got to do something about that Henry Bridell. I've got an idea, but most of it will be up to you. The first thing we've got to do is make Henry like you. And then when he finds out what a swell dog you are, maybe he won't be afraid of dogs anymore. Now the thing you have to do is make believe you like Henry an awful lot. Almost as much as you like me. Do you think you can do that, Lassie? Shh. We're supposed to be asleep. We'll start our plans in the morning. Night, Lassie. This is an unusual pleasure. Coffee for two. <laughs> we don't have much time to talk in the morning, do we? You know, I miss my little chatterbox when he's not at the table. Our son is sleeping the sleep of the just. Oh, to be a boy again. Thanks for waking me up, Lassie. I might have slept all day. I've got it all planned. But remember, it's up to you. I'm going to go see Henry Bridell this morning, and you're going to stay home. But that's part of the plan. I'm going to go first, and you're going to meet me later at the fishing hole by the lake. Understand? <laughs> It seems that Henry doesn't like dogs. And with Timmy, it's uh, like me, like my dog. Well, not quite. But the boy's mother doesn't like dogs either. And Timmy just couldn't understand how anybody, especially a grown-up, couldn't like dogs. Well, frankly, neither can I. Well, if I know my son, he's not going to let it rest there. Which is exactly what we'd expect of him. Isn't it? Mm-hmm. Good morning, Mom. Mm, good morning, dear. Did you have a good sleep? Uh-huh. Lassie woke me up. She wanted to remind me. Remind you? What? Well, me and Lassie, I mean Lassie and I, we've got a plan. I can't tell you about it now, but it's a good plan. And you can help, too. Well, if it's a good plan, I'll try to help all I can. What do I have to do? Well, Lassie's gonna stay here till you tell her to meet me at the fishing hole by the lake. In about an hour. Yeah, I guess that'll give me enough time. Lassie knows about it, don't you, girl? Well, I'll keep a sharp eye on the clock. You go ahead and eat your breakfast. Hello, 
there. It's Timmy, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. Timmy Martin. It's nice of you to stop by, Timmy. Thank you. I came over to see if Henry wanted to go fishing. Fishing? Can I, Mom? Well, I don't know, Henry. Please, I've never been fishing in my whole life. Oh, I know, but... Well, is it perfectly safe? Oh, yes, ma'am. Well, I guess it'll be all right. Thanks, <laughs> Mom. Where's your dog? Oh, Lassie? She's home. I'll tell you when it's time. What are you and Timmy up to, anyway? <laughs> I'll bet. Hi. Hi. I've got to drive back into town. Oh? Oh, I forgot to pick up some chicken feed. Here, this will keep you from getting greedy. I'm taking this cake to Mrs. Bridell. Mrs. Bridell? Oh, the new neighbor. And since you have to go right by the house, you can give me a ride. Mmm, I'll carry the cake. Well, all right, I guess it's time. Timmy's for the fishing hole, Lassie. You go find him. <laughs> what was that all about? I don't know. Timmy and Lassie are up to something. I couldn't get any information out of either of them. any fish in here? We must have been here an hour. Sure there's fish in here. We haven't been here more than 10 minutes. I caught one. I caught a fish all by myself. Look, I caught one. Be careful, or he'll fall back in the water, and you'll fall in too. said she was at home. She was. She won't hurt you. Where are you, Lassie? <laughs> See? Look, Lassie wants to be friends. Shake hands with her, Henry. Look, he made her cry. Aw, oh, she isn't really crying. Unless she's got feelings the same as you. How would you like it if you wanted to make friends with somebody and they wouldn't even shake hands with you? She likes me. Sure she does. Tell her to do the trip. Would she? For me? Lassie, roll over. <laughs> Timmy, she's wonderful. I sure wish Lassie was my dog. Lassie does everything I tell her to. You're doing a real good job, Lassie. She's beginning to like you already. Keep on pretending you like him. Come on. Your mom said you were down here. What are you doing? Fishing. And Henry isn't afraid of dogs anymore. Get away! Get away from me! Get away from me! Get away! Get away from me! Don't run away! Mike won't hurt you! Mike, come back here! I thought you said he wasn't afraid of dogs anymore. He wasn't afraid of Lassie, was he? Oh, aren't they lovely? Mm. You know, having your own flower garden is really only one of the joys of living in the country. <laughs> yes, I know. But, you know, after living in the city, it all seems so, so strange and so quiet. 
Especially at night, it almost makes me uneasy. Well, what you need is a watchdog. I suppose Timmy told you about what happened yesterday. Yes. Well, I'm afraid Henry gets his fear of dogs from me. I've been terrified of them ever since I was a little girl. There, there was a mad dog in the neighborhood. Oh, well, then I can understand your being frightened. But you know, Lassie's a great comfort to us. She's not only Timmy's closest friend, she's his guardian. We never worry whenever he's with Lassie. Oh, I know all the wonderful things about dogs, Ruth, and I've tried to like them and not be afraid of them, but I can't. I honestly can't. I understand. Oh, my goodness, look at the time. I've got to be going. My family will be getting hungry. <laughs> oh, Henry, what is it? It was a dog, a little dog, and I was afraid of him. Oh, but it's all right now, dear. And, and I caught a fish, a real fish, for the first time in my whole life. And I ran away and left it there. Oh, don't worry about that, Henry. We'll catch another fish sometime. Well, why not try later today? There's a special place down by the lake for fish fries. We could have a picnic and the boys could catch our supper. Why, that's a wonderful idea, Ruth. I'll bring the salad. Good. Oh, and I better bring along some hamburger just in case the fish don't cooperate. I just have a feeling this is your lucky day, Henry. And I'll be very surprised if you don't catch your own trout for supper. <laughs> I'll see you later. Thanks for the coffee. Thank you for the cake. <laughs> We don't catch any. Don't worry. It's real deep, so there's always lots of fish. I got one, I got one. I bet even Mrs. Bidell likes dogs now. Huh, Lassie? I tell you what, just to make sure, you go over and stay with Henry and make believe he's your very best friend. Okay, Lassie? Thank you, Lassie. Gee, Mom, Lassie sure is a keen dog. Oh, she certainly is, Henry. 
You know, I think it's about time you had a keen dog of your own. Can I, Mom? Can I pick up my own dog? Oh, of course, Henry. I want Lassie. Henry, Lassie belongs to Timmy. I couldn't give Lassie to you, Henry. Henry, Lassie's a part of Timmy's life. A great, big, important part. <laughs> Why, she's like one of the family. Now, you couldn't give away a member of your own family, now could you? She saved my life. That proves she loves me more. No, it doesn't. Lassie saved you because you're my friend. There are a lot of other dogs in the world. Some of them are almost as good as Lassie. I, I'm sure you'll find one you love just as much. Just ask her if she'd rather be Timmy's dog or mine. I, I'm afraid it's the only way we can convince him. All right. Call your dog, Timmy. Here, Lassie. Here, girl. a dog. Honest, you will. And it'll be a dog that you want. I'll never find one that wants me. Yes, you will. All right. You tell me where. Well, I know. I know just the place. Don't we, Lassie? <laughs> Dog, and he always will be. Huh, Lassie? 